Hi, this is Aman and Ankita and this is our Canada road trip story. This is our first working day on the trip. Lot of catch up had to be done. It was a long day at office. However, late sunset time would mean we still have some time to check out the city. The exchange district features an exceptional collection of heritage buildings built between 1880 and 1920, all tucked away within a small 20 block area. The exchange does a great job of illustrating city's key role as a center of grain and wholesale trade. The city was incorporated in 1873 and got its first mayor in 1874. Only 388 voters registered in the first election. In 1876, around $40,000 were spent to construct the first city hall building, which turned out to be a design disaster and had to pull down within the first year of its operation. Current iteration of city hall came up in 1960s. The Union Bank building is a symbol of Winnipeg's growth and excitement. 1870 to 1900, most banks were in Eastern Canada, but Union Bank focused on the untapped market of Western. It was the first skyscraper in Canada. At time of its construction, this was the second tallest building in the whole English Empire. Grain exchange was rapidly growing in early 1900s and were key to agricultural-based industry in Western Canada. With increasing popularity of steam engine, Trans-Canada Railway further promoted Winnipeg's economic prospectors further. Pre-1900, district features bar, billiards, upper floor courthouse and prison. You can also see Bizu Theatre here, which was the first theatre in Winnipeg. Exchange is full of dock shelter base to provide covered area for cart loading unloading. Ella Cora Hind is one of the memorable Manitobian who operated out of these newspaper offices. She was the first female journalist in Western Canada and she made her name by forecasting crop production within one percentage of margin of error in 1900s. Winnipeg's growth s slowed considerably after the opening of Panama Canal in 1914, the canal reduced reliance on Canada's rail system for international trade and the increase in ship traffic helped Vancouver surpass Winnipeg to become Canada's third largest city in the 1920s. What started as most promising city in Western development in 1800 matured to its potential by the 1920s. 1990s Winnipeg journalist strike was another key event which curtailed the potential of this city. It was longest and largest labor conflict in North America that culminated with firing of police force and tragic events of Bloody Saturday. The first impression of Winnipeg was that of a survivor city, which survived downturn in its economic fortune and still figured out a way to stay relevant. It was another busy day at work. In late evening, we gathered some time to check out Assiniboine Park. It is named after Assiniboine people who are First Nation people originally from northern Great Plains of North America. The park officially opened in 1909 and covers around 1100 acres. Park seems like a hub for cultural activities in the city. Pavilion a museum art gallery that opened in 1998. Park featured sports ground and seems like a bustling hub for cricket in Winnipeg. English Garden is a key attraction here. The winding paths and free form of the English garden are a feast for the senses in every season.
this section of park is designed for kids. Leo Moi was born in Ukraine and immigrated to Canada in 1948 during World War II. He was a worldwide celebrated sculpture and rose to Order of Canada in 1989. Leo Moll's sculptural garden celebrates work made of copper in a natural setting. More than 300 of Moy's work are displayed in this garden. The focus on nature and everyday activity is a breath of fresh air in this era of Instagram and Facebook. The spacious layout offers a good reason to get out, walk and run and be with the peaceful environment. Garden comprises a gallery, a renovated studio and an outside Family Center is a more modern addition to Assiniboine Park. After visiting these parks, it makes you wonder how well thought and well planned these city buildings. You got a respect to the people in charge. We felt good being in Winnipeg. Next day was a Thursday and quite busy. We did not get a chance to go out. Next day was Friday. Both of us continued to wrap up our work week. In the evening, we went out to see Human Rights Museum, another must-see attraction in Winnipeg. Before we get to more serious subject matter of the museum, a quick thought about the architecture of the building. It is very different. You can see it from a long distance and it's a piece of art in itself. Exhibit starts with the timeline of key events, people in the history of humanitarianism. There were more detailed exhibits dedicated to key humanitarian crises in Canadian history. It includes Right for Safety for Indigenous Women. <laughs> Residential schools. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you today to offer an apology to former students of Indian residential schools. The government now recognizes that the consequences of the Indian residential schools. Underground Railroad to End Slavery. Expropriation of Japanese Canadians during World War II. Exclusion of Chinese Canadians from immigration policy. Rights of Matis people who were mixed descendant of European and native parents. And more recently, Winnipeg strike of 1919. They say acknowledging your mistakes is first step to improve and Canadian society seems to have done that. It is no coincidence that Canada is more open to other cultures. There is a conscious effort behind this, and this museum demonstrates that. Next floor had this garden of contemplation, which was aptly placed. You would need some time to digest what you saw till now. Next floor host exhibits focused on times of human rights violation in international arena. 
It includes Armenian genocide of 1915, anti-Semitism during Nazi time. This mug, this beer mug of the time shows how anti-Semitism sentiments were spread in Europe in 1920s and 40s. Next is Guatemala genocide of Maya people, Cambodia genocide of 1975, 100-day genocide in Rwanda, Ukrainian feminine genocide of 2009, and many more. Once you think over it, killing people of a specific group has been a frequent and disturbing trend across our history. Then, our actually history books talk about. Sad part is, we as a species still have not learned our lesson well. Tower of Hope is dedicated to Israel Esper who conceived the plan for this unique museum. He wanted to leverage the museum to further understanding of human rights in Canada and worldwide. It made some impact on us for sure.